Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on subtitle speeds. My name is Agnieszka Szarkowska and I'm principal investigator of the SHORE project in which we address the question whether viewers can keep up with increasingly fast reading speeds. In this tutorial I will first introduce the notion of subtitle speed, I'll demonstrate how to set it in a subtitling program and I'll show you the impact of speed on text condensation. Finally, I'll tell you briefly what we found in the short project. I will be using EasyTitles 5 subtitling software. If you haven't used it before, you may find it useful to watch a tutorial on EasyTitles fundamentals. Subtitle speed, also known as reading speed or presentation rate, is usually measured in characters per second or words per minute. Personally, I don't like the term reading speed as it is not so much the speed of reading but rather the speed at which subtitles are displayed. The most widely known rule on the speed of interlingual subtitles, that is subtitles translated from one language to another, is the six seconds rule. It says that a full two-line subtitle should be displayed on screen for six seconds in order for an average viewer to be able to read it. Not longer because viewers will reread it and not shorter because they will not have enough time to read it. The six second rule is equivalent to 144 words per minute or 12 characters per second. The reason we have a limit on the speed of subtitles in the first place is that Apart from reading the subtitles, viewers also need time to follow the on-screen action. Plus, we simply cannot read a text display at, say, 50 characters per second. We need time to notice the subtitle, go down with our eyes to the subtitle area, read and process the text. So, there are human limitations on how fast we can go. What exactly is the limit or the optimum subtitle speed depends on many factors such as film complexity or viewer characteristics. Different countries have different traditions regarding subtitle speeds. A study we conducted among professional subtitlers showed a great variety of speeds used on the market now. As a subtitler, you probably work for different clients who have different requirements when it comes to reading speed possibly ranging from about 12 to 17 characters per second for languages with alphabetic script. On Netflix, for instance, the speed of translated interlingual subtitles is currently 17 characters per second for adult programs, but 20 characters per second for intralingual English-to-English -English subtitles. Professional subtitling programs allow you to set the desired speed following your client's specific requirements. Let's have a look at subtitle speed settings in EasyTitles. We go to File, Project Settings, Reading Speed tab. I will choose the characters per second measurement method, including spaces and punctuation. The option count half width symbols is primarily intended when working with Japanese. We also have an option called progressive, which I'm not going to use this time, which allows us to have lower speeds for short subtitles and higher speeds for longer subtitles containing more text. The intersection point is the time when the reading speed calculated by both progressive and non-progressive methods is the same. The adjustment is the strength of the progressive calculation. Progressive speed is slower before reaching the intersection point and faster after that. According to EasyTitles manual, the idea is that the human brain needs quite a bit of time to get used to the subtitle just shown on screen and once it's there, the viewer can read faster. I haven't seen much research to prove this, but that's how they have it here. Reading speed can be calculated in two ways, using duration or character count. Duration is the default value and EasyTitles will calculate the required subtitle duration according to the characters per second or words per minute parameters that we set before and it will compare the result with actual duration. In character count, the program will take the subtitle duration 
and will calculate the optimal number of characters it may contain, depending on the current setting. Lower and upper limits, the find the margins or tolerance for the calculated reading speed. They would be indicated as below or above the reading speed. Limits are either set in percentages uh, from the ideal reading speed or as characters per second, defining the tolerance threshold below or above which we will see an error indicator. The same applies for checks you may want to run after you finish subtitling and before you send your file to the client. I don't want my subtitles to go above 20 characters per second, so I will set 20 CPS as the upper character limit here. I'm not really worried about the lower limit, so I'll just leave it um, as it is. Subtitles identified as below the reading speed limit indicate that the viewer may not be able to read the whole subtitle comfortably. And this is something we need to worry about as subtitlers. Subtitles identified as above the reading speed limit indicate that they stay on screen longer than required, which is normally not a big problem. Let us now have a look at how it works on the real example. I have quite a fast-paced and dialogue-heavy film, and I'll show you first a verbatim version of subtitles, something that you would normally see in English subtitling for the deaf and hard of hearing. Wow! Harvard is over 300 years old. Founded in 1636. That means that almost everyone who ever went to Harvard is dead now. Are you sure you still want to go here? Yes, I'm sure. They developed the pacemaker here, also discovered how electromagnetism and radioactivity are two manifestations of the same force and postulated existence of a charmed quark. I was wondering who did that. Let's have a look at some reading speed indicators. Ideally, you would want to have the green diamond indicator to be on the green area here. That means that subtitles are within the allowed reading speed that we set. And it's the same here and in the next one as well. We can see the actual subtitle speed at the bottom right hand corner. However, when you go to the first subtitle from this fragment, which is uh, here, you will see that the diamond is red and it is placed on the right of the green bar. The subtitle speed here is 17 characters per second, so it's just below the speed that we set, so it's okay, I'm not going to worry about this. Let's have a look at this subtitle. This subtitle shows the reading speed of 25 characters per second, which is pretty excessive. I can see that my diamond is red and it is placed on the left of the green bar, which means that I put too much text for people to be able to comfortably read this subtitle. There is also another indicator in the subtitle list showing that duration is below the reading speed limit that we set. So what can I do? I can either extend the duration of this subtitle a bit or reduce the text it contains. I'll try to extend the duration by a few frames and I will think I'll be fine. Great, so far so good. However, let's imagine that we worked for a client whose style sheet says you need to subtitle at 12 characters per second. So I'm going to use different project settings for this. I go to File project settings and I choose the speed of 12 characters per second. You've probably noticed that all my subtitles now have reading speed indicators showing that I have too much text for this duration. What I need to do now is to reduce the text. How to do this properly, of course, is a uh, judgment call really. Normally you would get rid of elements of spoken language, repetitions, false starts, hesitations, etc. 
then you can either use a red pencil method to simply take out entire fragments of the text or try to edit out bits and pieces here and there. This is probably more natural in interlingual subtitling when translating, for instance, from English into another language. Because this tutorial is in English, I'll show you a 12 characters per second version of this clip. Harvard is over 300 years old. Founded in 1636. That means that almost everyone who ever went to Harvard is dead now. Are you sure you still want to go here? Yes, I'm sure. They developed the pacemaker here. Also discovered how electromagnetism and radioactivity are two manifestations of the same force and postulated existence of a charmed quark. I was wondering who... You may have noticed that I cut out the fragment about the term quark and a few other words marked in uh, red here. As we said before, condensing text from the dialogue in subtitles is often necessary to provide people with comfortable viewing experience, allowing them to read the subtitles and enjoy the film at the same time. However, given that many productions now are fast-paced and dialogue-heavy, and that subtitle speeds have increased in recent years, we wondered if people can follow fast subtitles up to 20 characters per second, which are more and more often found in films and shows. We conducted two experiments, one with clips with the soundtrack in Hungarian and the other in English. We showed people subtitles at different speeds, slow subtitles at 12 characters per second, medium paced, at 16 characters per second and fast at 20 characters per second and we tested their comprehension, cognitive load, enjoyment, reading experience and other things. We also monitored their eye movements. After they've watched the clips we first asked people if they had enough time to read the subtitles and follow the action on screen and in all subtitle speeds, to our surprise, Including the fast ones, the vast majority of people said, yes, we did have enough time to follow the action and to read the subtitles. When asked to assess the time that subtitles were displayed on screen, most people said that they were on screen for just the right time in all the subtitle speed options. Most people declared not to miss many or any words in all the subtitle versions, including the fastest one. In the second experiment, where the clips were in English, we asked participants if they noticed any mismatches between the dialogue and the subtitles. The highest number of mismatches were declared in the slowest subtitles at 12 characters per second by English people. Finally, Using eye tracking, we found that slow subtitles were reread most often compared to the fast ones, which was visible in the higher number of revisits to the subtitle area. Viewers stated they preferred condensed text in subtitles when they didn't understand the language of the film soundtrack, but they wanted to have more verbatim and less condensed text in English clips where they could understand what the characters were saying. All this raises interesting questions on the degree of condensation in subtitling. Possible implications of those findings are that with films whose language is well understood in the target country, subtitles could contain more text and be displayed at faster speeds but in the case of films with lesser known languages, more text reduction and slower speeds may be necessary. When thinking about those results, please remember that we tested a young and well-educated group of people who watched dialogue-heavy content typical of some online streaming platforms. All our subtitles were consistently displayed with the same speed throughout the clip. Please note that we're not saying that viewers can follow any subtitle speed whatsoever and we do not recommend going beyond 20 characters per second. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you want to know more about the SURE project, visit our Facebook page and read our publications.